What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick, joined as always by Big Show. Show, how are you? I am good on this beautiful Tuesday. Ain't it it's a wonderful though? day? It, it's and beautiful. It's February and it's in the 60s. Yes, it's nice. Yeah, I, some of y'all been are outside most in of the from day. California or Florida. Yeah, we don't get it like that all the time here. Hardly ever do we get it like that. Right. Okay, so. But you guys get all the hurricanes, so you can keep it. True. And hurricanes and earthquakes. I'll take the snow and the ice. We're good. So, bro. Another day. Another person is suing the lottery. This time, a U.S. man is suing Powerball. Uh, after being told his apparent $340 million win was in error. Now, I, you know, I showed you the article. In a nutshell, they broadcast the numbers. Um, he saw them. They were his numbers. Now, he thought he won. They said that that broadcast was in error because I guess a previous when they initially pulled the numbers, those weren't the same numbers. Now he's suing them because he said, Nope, those weren't them too bad. So sad. I want to know your take on this. My thing is, and if you just go like a retail store, if something has a ticket on it, it's that price. I mean, I know I've done that before. I've seen something that was like too good to be true. And they're like, oh, no, this isn't the price. Well, that's what it says. So that's what you got to sell it to me for. And they did because that's the truth. Well, theoretically, a store does not have to sell you for that. Now, if they want to alleviate a customer's always right and good customer service scenario, then yes, they do not have to sell you for that price. Well, I'm glad they did because I got a. 10 CD Led Zeppelin box set for only $10. Right. I mean, they chose to do so to, for good customer service, but it's not like a, like if you didn't, you couldn't have took them to court and said, you know, sued them for the, for the box set. I mean, I guess you could have, but yeah, that would have costed pointless. more in the end. Um, If I'm not mistaken, when I read this article, the numbers that match his ticket were actually, Posted the day before the actual drawing. Was it the day before or the day after? I, I It's been a couple of days since I read the article. I, I, I could have swore it was the day before. Hmm. Uh, because he did not actually see the, the numbers till two days after. Hmm. Okay. So... In his mind, when he saw them, the drawing had happened. But when they posted them, it was the day before the actual drawing. That's that's the power or the the lottery's dispute that they're saying. The way I read it. Um, I mean, if I was him, yeah, I'd be I'd be ticked off. I'd definitely be ticked off. Yeah. Yeah, I opened the article and it does say that on January 6th was the incorrect numbers posted. On January 7th was when the actual numbers were posted. You know, I mean, right. I mean, so he has some validity to his argument, but I don't think he's going to win anything. I don't think he's going to win his lawsuit. I don't think he will either, but I think... And I don't think he's getting hosed. It really is just a simple misunderstanding. I think this this is going to set a precedent, though. Because how do we keep people from, or these big companies from saying, oh, we don't really have $30 million to give away, so you didn't win. Well, I, that's not the case, though. I mean, it's, I know, but it's not a case that they don't have the money. It's the fact that his numbers weren't right. I agree with you. I, I, in this case, Powerball's got the money. But that's the U.S. Powerball across the board. 
What about statewide? Do you think more things like this are going to start happening? Do you think I mean, unless unless people isolated? are just dumb and they start posting the wrong numbers before the actual Powerball, I mean, yeah. But, I mean, I, how often do you hear about this? Well, you don't. Exactly. Because they don't post Powerball numbers <laughs> like that, you know. So, I'm just saying, it's it's... It's unfortunate no. for this gentleman. And if I was him, yes, I would feel some type of way because I thought I was about to be a multimillionaire. But, you know, sorry for you, boss. You got to go back to work tomorrow. Now, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm kind of lottery illiterate. I don't mm -hmm. play it. I don't really bet or anything like that because history shows that if I wager anything, I usually lose it. So, you know, whether it be a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, whatever the ticket cost, that's just me giving a donation to the great state of Kansas because I know I'm not going to win anything. Well, you're never not going to win anything when you have that attitude. If you go into it saying, I am not going to win, the, the, the law of attraction will tell you you're not going to win. That may be true. So, but now your your odds of winning are super low, but there is a chance, you know. You know, you have also a chance of getting struck by lightning. How many times in your life have you been struck by lightning? Haven't. So exactly. I'm definitely exactly. gonna keep keep that attitude up. I'm not gonna get struck by lightning. I'm not right. So I mean, you know, I might play every now and then. I don't play either, you know. But I mean, I might drop a dollar every now and then if I feel like it. But yeah, some, no. some, somewhere, you know, deep down in my in my soul, I know that that easy money like that's probably not healthy for me. I mean, don't get me wrong; I've gone to the casino a time or two, and you know, I've made a few bucks here and there. But odds are that's all a little different. More than not that you won't win the big one and yeah you're not me, you're not you're not the lottery is just like the casino and the fact that it's a company trying to make money if they've got a 300 million dollar jackpot you can best believe that they got 400 million available because they need advertising cost et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. even if they're not for profit They've got to make something in order to cover overhead. So, you know, you've got one winner and millions of other people contributing to that winner. Yeah, I've always wanted to to win the lottery and then talk to somebody and say, thank you for your dollar. You know, I've always wanted to do that. And, uh, you know, maybe someday. All right, if you guys have won the lottery before within the last, we'll say, five or ten years, make sure that you uh, not only like, subscribe, and, uh, you know, give us a thumbs up, but thank us for contributing to your wins. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, let's get to the meat and potatoes here. Let's talk about this Beyonce thing. And have have you heard the new song? Or any of the album? No, nah, I haven't heard it. Okay, so you and I are both in the dark on this, but I'll get to the song itself in a second. Um, the article I sent you was about John Snyder. Uh, that would be uh, I don't remember was he Bo or Luke Duke in the Duke's Hazard? Uh, I believe he was Luke. Okay, the blonde one. We'll just say that. Yeah. Um, he made a statement. Um, he whines, it says in the article, John Schneider whines that Beyonce making country music is like a dog marking every tree. Now, without going into the entire article just yet, yeah, it kind of is. That's the point uh, to cover different genres. Before we go into it, Let's get one thing clear with everybody. She's not the first person 
to, co- to cross genre lines. She won't be the last. Secondly, without even hearing the song, I'm not going to speak positively or negatively of it because I haven't heard it. But I will say this. You're free to do whatever you want, right? And in the event that it sounds good, does it matter who's singing it if you like it? Not really. I mean, she's got a nice voice. So if she sang a country song and I liked it, okay, cool. May joy go with you and peace behind you. To me, that's, it's just not shocking to me. It happens. Um, I wouldn't say that, uh, shocking wouldn't be the word. Um, pleasantly surprised. How's that? That she would put out a country album, you know, it's like, yeah. It's like all of a sudden, if if Eminem started singing, you know, you kind of be like, really? You know, even if he had a beautiful voice, you know, I'm just saying, you know, it just it would, it would kind of take you back because you don't you don't think of that. But the fact that she did, who cares? You know what I mean? His 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 uh, responses were strictly racial. There's yeah. no way, there's no there's no way around it. And, and where I'm going it. with that is I've read several other articles leading up to us recording there's a lot of country stations that refuse to play the song. And I've heard different things. I've heard we don't play her kind of music. We've gotten requests for it. And then that uh, radio station actually backtracked and didn't realize it was an actual country song Mm -hmm. and then began to play it. And then I've heard other people just saying that uh, they have no interest in playing it. Conversely, before we speak on that, conversely, on the urban radio stations, how often have we heard the song? You know, I so haven't. it's a it's a two way street, and 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 I've heard both sides of it. And just because she's black doesn't mean that she can't do country. Any of us of a certain age should know who Charlie Pride is. And, you know, if yeah, I'm he talking, was always country. If I'm talking, exactly. But if I'm talking too old for some of y'all people that, that want to put me in the grave, how about Darius Rucker? He was once the lead singer of the number one pop band in the country at one point, Hootie and the Blowfish. And for the last 20 years, he's been doing nothing but country albums, platinum country albums. So he gets airplay. So let's not make it sound like it hasn't been done before or it cannot be done. I mean, does this mean Taylor Swift is getting ready to come out with a mixtape bashing Kanye? I would pay money for that, by the way. Um, But. All right, go ahead and give me your thoughts on that. Uh, thoughts on what? On just the I, fact I, that I, I don't care about it one way or the other. I have, I, I think the I think uh, Schneider's comments were racial, mm-hmm. uh, and he should be ashamed of himself. Uh, but you know whether she wants to make a punk rock album, a heavy metal album, a gospel album, I don't care. I, I really don't. I like music for music, period. I don't care what the genre is. I like the way you put that because, you know, we didn't Snoop Dogg come out with a gospel album. I don't know. I think he did. I know he came out with a reggae album. He didn't make no gospel album. I think he did. He may have produced a gospel album, but he didn't do no songs. I'm going to look that up because I know he came out with a reggae album. Because he called himself Snoop Lion on that. Snoop Leon. Snoop Lion was on the uh, reggae album, but I'm pretty sure he did a gospel album too. I'm now, looking up. Okay. But while, while Big Show looks that up, and I'm getting ready to get off my soapbox, y'all. 
But despite having heard the song, and I'm not saying I'll never hear the song because, you know, I'm all about music. I like music. I, I admit it that I am not very big on country. I just don't listen to it. But that doesn't mean that I won't find something every now and then that um, that I, I, I wouldn't like. Um, great example while shows looking it up because Big Show is the one that um, on my alternate YouTube channel, myself and my bro Kaz, we listen to different music that we haven't heard before. And Big Show, the first song that uh, he introduced to us that was country, we liked it. And I'm trying to remember who was that. That was, was that? Uh, yeah, Allison Krauss. It was uh, Whiskey. Whiskey, Whiskey Lullaby. Lullaby. Thank you. Damn good song. Well, way. I apologize. Yes, he did. It's a, it's called Bible of Love. I, I knew and it. I knew Snoop I'm looking. It. I'm looking at the songs on there, and he's he's actually yeah. I don't, I'm I'm interested in taking taking a look at this. Listen to this. Yeah, and this goes with my point. Stars today are just like stars of yesterday. They cross many lines. And, you know, a lot of these artists that do one thing that's really popular with everybody, you have to realize when they were growing up, they listened to different things. And whether we like it or not, they're the ones that are putting it out. It's, it's, it's in their hearts. Um, another good point. Look, it's okay when it's Elvis Presley. It's not okay when it's a black person. That, let's just boil it down. <laughs> you know, Elvis Presley did gospel music and it was okay. White people were cool with it. A black woman does country music and, you know, oh my God, the world's on fire. Yeah, I said it. I said what I said. Y'all heard it here. Y'all heard it here. Um, Closing this down, though. Because, you know, what I have to say really isn't all that important because at the end of the day, people are going to do what they're going to do. But until we get past the mentality of the color of someone's skin or what they normally do, until we get past that, we won't be able to see what they are doing and what they're capable of. And it's not just about the white people that refuse to play it because the black people refuse to play it you know that kind of pigeonholes it um and i know this day and age everybody's more about downloads anyway so she'll make her money based on people's curiosity alone but just remember if it's a good song there's potential for more down the road and that should open the doors. Now, if it's a bad song, hey, sweep it under the rug. This may never happen again. Right. You don't really know until you try, right? That's right. All right, y'all. The Richard Kearney Opera album is coming out uh, next week. A shower near you. <laughs> Look, if I'm taking a shower and all of a sudden I turn around and you're singing to me, we don't have a problem. I'm just saying. Yeah, we, yeah, no, that's not going to happen. Ever. Okay. No. You say coming to a shower near you. <laughs> I, well, my shower for me, yeah, yeah, never mind. <laughs> I, I, I've backed myself into a hole here, folks, so I'm getting ready to switch subjects because we man. need to talk about this. And I need to change what I'm going to talk about because of breaking news today you and i were going to yes. talk about the link that i sent you from black and white sports they showed the two perpetrators in uh last week's shooting at the kansas city chiefs parade and the whole thing was the person that was talking was upset because nobody has released the names of the assailants um or listed anything because of the fact that they are black now i don't know if i agree with that being the case we'll get into that in a second 
But I want to let everybody know that as of the time of us taping this now, those names have been released and those two have been charged. And I believe they were both charged with murder. Yes. Um, first of all, just talking about that article or video you sent me, mm -hmm. dude's, to dude's totally retarded. They didn't say anything. It had nothing to do with their race. You know, if that's the case, how come, you know, we don't know the names of the adults that were shot, the victims? Aren't, aren't they both they under 18? Their race. Um, I, that I'm, I would be speculating. The, the uh, reason why I say that is because I think I, that if they're under, if they're minors, they don't throw the names out immediately until everything is, uh, put they don't out throw there. names, they don't throw names out immediately on any criminal case until they have the actual facts. Right. So, you know, you had that, they, they had to sift through million, a million people's testimony basically that were there mm -hmm. at that little spot and look through all the video and see what happened. And I'm surprised that it happened within in less than a week. You know, it happened, you know, the, the shooting took last Wednesday. And as of this taping, it's Tuesday and they're charged. You know, yeah. um, I mean, good job on the police department, Kansas City, Missouri Police Department. Yeah, I mean, these As two idiots whole. arguing with each other and then draw on each other in a public place. But there were multiple people that pulled guns, not just these two. So let's 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 be specific. Mm -hmm. These two are being indicted right now. They did ballistics on. Uh, well, here, since it's been released, the the suspects are Dominic Miller and Lindale Mays. Mm -hmm. They are charged with second degree murder. Miller's gun has been proven to be the bullet that killed the lady. Yes. So that is why. But there are multiple people that had weapons and shot. It wasn't just these two. Now, can you tell everybody why um, Lindale is also charged with the murder? Because he fired back and injured other people. There you go. Um, and they they just haven't got to the other perpetrators yet. Those perpetrators think that they got away with it, and they haven't. They would they will come up with charges. Thank you for um, mentioning that because he mentioned that there were other camera angles that aren't being showed, and my logic says. That's because the police don't want those out yet because they want to go through all that for evidence. Right. And I, I am aware, I do know, uh, well, I can't say I do know. Uh, I have seen that there was someone there with an AK-47 that was recovered. And there was a white gentleman that was being arrested by Homeland Security. How does an AK-47 make its way into a parade? Well, don't See, answer that because it's easier well, than I think. That's where I was thinking, and this is just my brain because I am to, you know, all the crime stuff we talk about and watch on mm -hmm. TV and things. But it was Valentine's Day. One of the biggest massacres happened at Union Station on Valentine's Day. The St. Valentine's Day massacre happened mm -hmm. back in, I think, the 20s. But it was a mafia hit, obviously. Um, you know, maybe some idiot was trying to make a name for himself, you know, St. Valentine's Day massacre part two. I don't know. Um, I do think that there was something possibly planned that could have been a lot worse. But because of this altercation, maybe that got thwarted. This is all speculation. My big show speculation. Um, you know, I have no no stats or data to back that up, but I have seen pictures of police officers standing over a backpack and an AK forty seven. If it was wow. a the police officer's AK forty seven, it would be in his hand, not on the ground, not being stood over, you know, that, that's not how they hold their weapons. They don't put their guns down. So I'm pretty sure it wasn't the police officers. I, there are pictures of a young, looks like a young, early 20s white male being arrested by Homeland Security. Um, he was in a black t-shirt. Um, 
So I'm sure that there's there's more things that are going to come up with this. But this particular issue, they, they obviously had to um, attack the person that actually killed the lady. Just thankful that they're, you know, I, 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 I pray for the lady's family. I'm just thankful that there was only one person that was murdered and not multiple Amen. people killed that. I agree. Look, because this is slightly warped and I want to, you know, keep it light too. Can I just say that I liked it better when y'all would just get liquored up and fall out of trees? <laughs> yeah. For real though. This, I did is too. Just... this is going to be a, a, this did put kind of a downer on, on the Super Bowl uh, victory. Um, definitely put a downer on the parade, especially citywide. Hypothetical. Um, y'all win next year. Is there a parade? Um, I would say yes. Um, but what I think, you know, what's possibly going to happen is the parade will be at Arrowhead. You can control the people that come in. You know, everybody in the stadium's not going to have a weapon because they're going to have to go through security. They're going to have to go through metal detectors. But versus a million people celebrating, you're going to have 80,000 people cheering in the stadium. And, you know, have the rally there in the, on the field. That's the only way that I can see where you can guarantee someone's safety at well, the rally. That's more money for Clark Hunt, too. He's going to charge for parking. I doubt it because the parade was free. Everything's free. They're not going to charge anything. Uh, maybe drinks or something like that. But um, it, it's, it's definitely a sad thing. You know, it is very and sad. Um, it, it it's going to turn. You know, it turns into a political debate on gun control and you know all this, all this and, crap. But and you know, I didn't realize either that this is the third straight professional parade where there was a mass shooting. Denver Nuggets had one, and the Texas Rangers had one. And at see, their that parades, puts, that puts a black eye on the whole thing because. Whether it be Kansas City or whoever wins the next championship anywhere, you almost don't want to have one, even though the public demands one. What do you do? I mean, what can you do? I like your idea of, you know, having it inside the stadiums. Um, I mean, it's it, it sucks because part of going to the parade is for those people that can't afford to go to the stadium. Can't afford to go to the games. This is my one opportunity that I can actually maybe see Patrick Mahomes with my eyes, you know, or or Travis Kelsey, or you know, get a high five from Isaiah Pacheco or whatever, you know. Um, that's what you know. And the parade is it, it's supposed to be, you know, a close knit family, you know, fan unit based type thing. And here's the other thing I want to talk about since we're talking about family, close knit stuff like that. The players were out in the streets for a little bit too. High they were like people. that. They were like that on the last two as well. Yeah, but uh, where I'm going with that is, let's say this happened around them, close to them. Oh, then you've got another issue altogether. Oh yeah, yeah, most definitely. But not to make light on the person that lost her life. Because no, that, I that is not insignificant at all. But no, I, I I think if there's going to be some sort of mass shooting, it would be at a rally, not the parade. Because yeah. the parade is so strung out over three or four miles or whatever it is, you know. Uh, I, I don't, I you know, that's why the rally made sense because everybody's so clustered in right there from Union Station to Liberty Memorial, you know. And then they said there was over a million people there. I believe it. There's I mean, two million. There's basically two million people in Kansas City per capita. Period. Well, two thirds so of everything half, was closed in Kansas City. Half so people of had to have something city, to do. But right, but half of the whole city was in that area. I mean, just to put that in perspective, you know, when I went to the very first one. You know, good five six hundred thousand people. That's still a lot of people, though. I mean, who can be wrong? But a million freaking people. That's that's a that's a lot of people. 
a whole lot of people. But, you know, the, the, the thing that bothers me is that this will turn into a political issue about, you know, I mean, I've already had multiple debates with with people, you know, well, that once you know, guns should, are involved, it already becomes a political issue. People shouldn't own AK 47s. You don't need an AK 47, you know. This that's why America is America. You know, I tried to explain to my daughter that, you know, she eats her steak with a fork. I take that same fork and kill somebody with it. That fork did not become an assault fork. It was the person holding the freaking fork. So the guns aren't what's the problem. It's the people holding the guns that are the problem. People, he practices martial arts. So I'm pretty sure he could make it an AK-47 <laughs> if he wanted to. <laughs> Just saying, you know, I, I seen this cool little meme and I shared it uh, today on Facebook. But it's basically, um, you know, it's a picture of, of a wolf eating a sheep. And it says a wolf attacks a sheep, killing it other sheep see that the sheep was killed by teeth the teeth are dangerous all of the sheep agree to remove their teeth and turn them in the problem is the wolf still have teeth so with the guns you know those people that think they should turn in their guns the problem is the bad guys still gonna have guns yeah the bad guys never gonna turn theirs in no all right no more soapbox stuff from us. Uh, we appreciate you guys listening to us while we, you know, rant about these three different unique topics today. Super thankful that the children all made it as well, because there were quite a few. I think there were 12 or, 12 or 13 kids that were shot. I heard 12, but, you know, the number yeah. can change at any time um, until it all so comes to light. You know, praise praise God that 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 they were just injured. And not, uh, not you know that their lives weren't taken. And, and again, condo condolences to uh, the yes. young lady who lost her life. Uh, yeah, and I, what is her name? Because we mentioned, we mentioned uh, Lisa Lopez Galvin. That was Thank the victim. Uh, I want to make sure that you know we we express our condolences because we gave the names of the suspects, and I want to give her her flowers as well. Uh, you know, uh, rest in peace, young lady, and uh, pray for your family. Absolutely. All right. On that note, we are going to get up and up out of here. We guarantee we'll be back next week with some new and exciting stuff. In the meantime and in between time, for those of you who are watching on YouTube, like, share, subscribe, leave me a comment. You can't hurt my feelings. Say whatever you want. Uh, if you're listening on any of the podcast feeds, Leave comments on them as well. If you just want to email us, email us at the slightly warped podcast at yahoo.com. That's all one thing. You don't need to worry about spaces. Spell check won't take care of it anyway. And big show. Glad to have you again. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I look forward to some stuff coming up in the future. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited for the next few weeks. All right, take us on out of here. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Appreciate you. Um, you know, we were talking about the parade and everything, so these words, uh, no truer words have been spoken. Be sure to hug the people that you love. Tell them you love them. Because as last week, tomorrow is not promised. Um, love each other. God bless you. See you next week. You guys take care.